you look out the back, it is the man in red, John John. Huge first turn through a massive fan of spray. Oh boy. John is going to line this one up. Expect him to go to town. High risk first turn. Oh, get out of here. That was incredible. John John is toying with it out there right now. Margaret River's own Jack Robinson's going to take off. Now looking for the big finish on the inside. Great lip line float. Jack Robinson turning now on a beast of a way. Wow. Jack knew that he couldn't afford to hold back. The king of Margaret River in motion. John John Florence on his opener against Jack Robinson here in the final of the Margaret River Pro whipping that rail work into the pocket, looking to finish nice and strong. John John Florence hits the end section and stays on his feet. What a show we have in store for us here in the final heat of the contest here at the Margaret River Pro. John John Florence versus Jack Robinson. This is as good as it gets in WA. Joe Chappell with Richie Lovett here for the call. Jack versus John John. I mean, it's clear that JJF is the clear favorite, but Jack Robinson is thriving off his hometown crowd. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Well, uh, you said it before. If John John Florence is the king of Margaret River, then, uh, well, Jack Robinson must be the prince, and he wants, uh, he wants the crown. So, you know, he's just been on fire all week. But, yeah, John John Florence, he is the man to beat. The numbers don't lie. He has just been dropping nine after nine, just up in the excellent range and uh, bringing a, a, a brand of surfing to, to Margaret River that has reset the benchmark. And hopefully it's gonna come to blows here in the final. Jack Robinson's trying to bring back a championship tour title for Australia. The last time it happened was 32 years ago. What? With your hero from Manly Beach. Bart Lynch. Bart Lynch taking this one back in 1990. And then the CT kind of went away from the West, came back in 2014, where we saw dominance from guys like Michelle Perez, Adriano de Souza getting a win in crazy conditions. John was a part of that final. But obviously the last few years, it's been the John John era. Last year, Felipe Toledo taking the title in John's absence. Opening score for Jack Robinson, Rich, a 7.0. We got to see that one during the celebration interview with Isabella Nichols. John's answer, a 5.0. Back to Jack's start. Yeah, so a good start here for Jack Robinson. He got the inside track. At really aggressive snap up high in the lip to start off and then again a slow sort of cut back back into the energy part so a, a good finish coming here and just the layback hammer and somehow just rides out of that foam this is john's answer back that trademark swooping tight pocket turn another cut back and then just does some rail to rail transition work all the way through to the inside and you can see just not quite as strong a finish on this one as uh, as Jack Robinson. So uh, advantage, advantage to Jack Robinson in this. Pulling in deep, Florence Whoa. comes out. Packing a hollow section and the crowd enjoying this clash. Just a tube, no turns, but John is just heating up. We talked about the wild stat of John not losing out here since 2016 when Kiowa Belly was kind of his nemesis in that first world title run. He's taken himself out with injuries. When you look at when he qualified, I mean, he was up in the mid-season rotation 2011, but his first full year 2012, you look at he's had a spot full time on tour for now a decade, but he's only had four completed seasons. Two of those world titles. The other two, he was in the top five. So now Florence still looking for a third world title run this year, looking for his third victory here at the Margaret River main break. Mm, well, he's, uh, he's the one to beat out here for sure and definitely part of the world title conversation. And he'll be working hard to get up into that top five position. And uh, we'll get an update on whether the, the yellow leader jersey, is it going to change hands? It could possibly change hands. John has to win this final. Oh, OK. To wear yellow heading into G-Land. 5.4 on this tube bride, Rich. Yeah, nice backdoor section there, John. Coming through and taking the doggy door out. Just able to uh, really thread the needle on this one. You saw that backdoor section. He came in it from behind and then squeaked out. Here he goes again, wow. Layback, fin throw for Florence. Off the lip, already an aggressive 
combination of turns, all kinds of variety on the open face at main break. And that is that stylish John John claim, arms to his side. Sometimes he'll do a little glance at the panel. This time he's keeping it tight as he is looking to improve on a 5.0 there. Yeah, it takes a lot for uh, JJF to uh, really bust open the claim. It's more of a subtle body kind of uh, showing to the judges. I like that, and uh, so should you. But, uh, wow, really starting to push these turns to the absolute limit, Joe. We saw him do it at the semi-final, just jamming it to the point of, of full disconnection with the back foot. And uh, we saw it again there. So staying busy in this one. Three rides already. Let's check out the replay here. So John just hammers that first section just completely loses control of the tail, but then regains it, digs it back into the face of the wave and a nice aggressive finish. So just nabbing this one under priority. That first turn was just so on edge, so on rail. And one of the most dynamic, exciting turns we've seen all day. Have a look at this. Wow, just driving the fins, full release all the way around somehow. Reconnects with the board, shoves it back under his feet and uh, continues on down the line. Extraordinary. Kaipo, you've got the best seat in the house. How is your view of that? It's like John's playing his own video game. Uh, that, you know, it didn't look like much of a wave, but then John John, that first turn, I saw the whole half of his board through the back of the wave and just all the power exuded in him, spray going everywhere. It was just like, it's like John John's turned up the volume just to another notch on every single one of his turns. So impressive, Kaipo. 8.5 for John John. Just quietly took the wow. lead. He is so talented under priority. Obviously showing he doesn't need to wait for a set wave. We talk about the rail engagement that he has here at main break. And now he's mixing it up, that first section. One of the coolest modern day laybacks you could do in the ocean. This is, this is crazy just how how he's composed this whole heat and the whole event in fact just just getting a little bit better with each one just hitting each gear he's gone fifth gear in the semi-finals now he's hitting sixth gear in the final but here's the answer back from jack robinson robinson needs to keep tabs on florence foam climb he will sink now priority is with john robinson is keeping that 7.0 start still the second best number of the final so far and these two have spent some time together in the past. I'll never forget when they called each other up and decided to do go-behinds with a very expensive camera in the pit at the box. I mean, they're both so talented. They trusted each other to be incredibly close to get some of the coolest vision across the bay. Florence's turn, setting up that solid rail hook, skipping over sections, flying down the line. There's the alley-oop. And he will have a wipeout face planting on the open face. I like how he's mixing it up, though. You can tell John John's having a lot of fun right now. Yeah, and, and perhaps just sensing that uh, there's quite a few opportunities early on in the heat. It might go a bit quiet later. So John's thinking, you know what? I'm not going to wait for the biggest set. So I'm going to get some numbers on the board. And uh, he converted that, uh, that third ride, that 8.5. Any other human would have taken off on that wave and maybe gone, oh, there's, there's maybe seven points in this, maybe seven and a half. And John's turned it into an 8.5. So that just shows you what uh, what Jack Robinson's got to deal with here. And, and uh, if the momentum from the opening ride was with Jack, it's shifted now to John John Florence, who is uh, sort of starting to control the heat. John John Florence's stats here are out of control, and he's just adding to them now. Let's take another look here. Yeah, nice opening uh, slice to start things off pretty bumpy here so john goes you know what i'm going to take to the air i'm going to show him something that i haven't done in this event so far but just didn't quite get the pop out of the lip we know john john can do some of the biggest alley-oops that we've ever seen uh, not only in free surfs but in competition as well and you know john would be so inspired to show that with jack robinson and even when john was young he was always competitive trying to compile the best movies in the world and he had a lot of heroes to look up to not just on the north shore of oahu but across the planet and a lot of his vision that he'd gather would come right here in west oz one of his favorite places in the world let's catch up with runner-up of the women's final gabriella bryan's with laura 
Gabriella Bryan, the world now knows your name. Your first ever final here as the rookie at the Margaret River Pro. How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, um, of course I wanted to get the win, but I'm really happy with my performance. Um, there was so much pressure in this event, and I'm really happy I made the cut and got Rookie of the Year. It's one of my biggest goals, and now I have the back half of the year to get a win. <laughs> and anyone you'd like to thank? It's been a long, you know, couple of months here on the road in Oz. How, how, who have you done it, and how have you done it? Yeah, um, I've had a most amazing support system. <laughs> Um, I've been traveling, I have my mom and my dad here with me, so it's really special being coached by Reynos and everyone at home that stays up so late and all night to watch me. I appreciate all the support and you guys are the best. Amazing. Well, we'll see you in J-Land. What other event are you looking forward to in the back half? I'm so excited for J-Bay. It's one of my dream locations. Um, yeah, I think I'm definitely looking forward to that one the most. Oh, enjoy this amazing moment, Gabby. You are incredible and we'll see you very, very soon at J-Land. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Laura, and a big thanks to Gabrielle O'Brien, who inspired us all with some insane performances through the semifinals to come back against one of the greats at Margaret River over Courtney Comlog, battled in her first CT final, the rookie that made the cut, and now she gets to enjoy this dream. Jay Bay, G Land, and beyond. Oh, the sky's the limit for Gabrielle O'Brien. Yeah, her trajectory is uh, just pointing upwards, isn't it? It's. Uh it seems to be building with each event, with each heat. She seems to be surfing just better and better and really starting to, to uh, feel her position on tour and, and feel a sense of belonging. 19.25 to go here. John John Florence, 8.5 and a 5.4, has some of the scariest stats that add to his reign here at Margaret River. Uh, coming into this event, his winning percentage was already at 85%, which is just unbelievable. I mean, to compare that to Slater at the events he's dominated, 79% winning percentage in Tahiti. Slater's got a 70% at pipe for winning percentage. 85 for John. Obviously, that's going up because he hasn't lost a heat in this contest. Robinson got second in the opening round, but he has been in a special rhythm and main break. And maybe one of his toughest tests that he had earlier today was his battle with a Hawaiian named Baron Mamiya. Yeah, that was, a, that was a big match up, a really tight heat. Lots of uh, high scoring, scoring waves there. And it felt like the ocean was sort of at its peak of the swell there in terms of today's action. Looks like there could be a few lines on offer here. Will we see Jack with a counter punch? Jack Robinson has the priority in his favor. Richie Lovett, you've competed in over a hundred CT events all around the world. You've been the underdog at times and the favorite throughout your career. In Jack's role here, when you know you're going against the guy that is flawless at main break, what do you change? How do you approach this final? Uh, I think you've got to take the pressure off. Jack's actually up against it here because he's got not only the pressure of trying to find the formula to beat John John Florence, he needs to block out the fact that, he, you know, the whole uh, the whole headland here is in his corner. He needs to shift that from pressure to support uh, and just feel that energy. And he's the type of guy that can that can convert that uh, that energy into positive kind of vibes and, and really feel his approach here. So, look, I, I think if he tries to change what he's doing, he's probably going to, you know, flap himself into, a, into falling off on a wave. I just think he needs to stick to his guns. He does have this really impressive air game. And uh, I think he's going to need to tap into that because if he tries to out-carve John, he's going he's gonna to end up second place. So uh, I think we need to see a mix of carves and those big giant airs on the end section. Jack Robinson with his handful. Will, the local hero from WA, upset the reign of John John Florence here at Margaret River. We're going to take a Bonsoy brew break back for the remainder of the contest right after this. I don't know, I guess I, I want to leave my mark like that. It's just maybe I inspire people to get out and be in the water and enjoy it, but not in any specific or particular way, more how they want to do it. Some of my favorite things to do outside of surf contests are hang out with my friends, golf, just come up with random goofy things that a lot of people might not think is fun, but we make it fun with the crew we have. Oh, Bruce's part. The WCL is working with Nature Conservation, Margaret River Region, to heal this beautiful dune landscape. We are 
One Ocean is an initiative led by the WSL to inspire our global surf community to protect and conserve our one ocean. It's so cool to see, you know, the younger generation just already taking part in initiatives like this. That's just key to a, a beautiful future and a sustainable coastline. Help us preserve the future of our sport. To learn more, go to weareoneocean.org. West is best because the coastline, the scenery, the surf, the food, the landscape, I mean, everything is just crispy and fresh. It's one of the most beautiful places on tour. To be a surfer here, you got so many different options, you never really get bored. Waves that you take off on and you're just going so fast with no effort is kind of my favorite type of surfing. Yeah, West is the best. West is best for now. <laughs> We're loving our time in the West. We still have 15 minutes left in the Margaret River Pro. John John Florence still leads over the local boy, but this is what Robinson did during the break. Yeah, so Jack just finding another inside runner here, streaking down the line, gets the stance ready. You know what's coming, the big frontside air. Just not able to stick the landing. Got some height and pop on this one, Joe. You can see he's up there just hovering at this point and uh, got the grab, lets it go, had eyes on the, on the landing pad, and unfortunately, just the board got off axis and uh, wasn't able to ride out. Wow, that would have been a, a huge score had he landed that. Oh, such a cool punt, and you just automatically think of Jack's influences. I mean, he's got that style of Bruce Irons, and those big old lofty straight airs is Bruce's favorite thing to do. Just big old launches, sometimes not even a big rotator, just go as high as you can like you're floating through the sky. As we see John rolling it. Florence looking to better a 5.4. Connects off the first section around the corner. Big rip in the pocket. Driving through this inside corner. He can be ultra creative here. He'll jam it shut with power and control. Jack's turn. Robinson building some speed. Looks like he wants to ramp up again. This time a big rotation. He gets it. <laughs> Here we go. Crowd just going absolutely wild. There behind there, West Oz boy, Jack Robinson. And uh, we were just saying, what, we, what did he need to do to beat John John Florence? And uh, he's identified, I need to go to the air. I need to really tap into that high risk, that progressive element that the judges just love to reward when you take those high risks. And uh, well, he stuck that one. Came close to that front side straight air. And I love that he didn't even try to repeat himself. Next time he's like throwing a rotator and gets the landing. One more look here. Oh, he just had uh, eyes for one thing here, streaking down the line. The stance, there it is, gets the rotation, gets the grab on the inside rail. And uh, a difficult point to land as well. So you can see, hits the lip in the perfect spot. Just allows the wind there, helping him keep the board connected to his feet. Lands on the roof, then gets the rotation back around, gets the nose pointing towards the shore, and somehow just muscles his way through the trough. Gets the landing, just the one turn though. Let's see what John John did. A more of a constructed wave. Gets the uh, lip projection here, drives around the full wrap. Full redirection back down the line. Another clean snap there. Just loses a little pace on the inside, but gets to the finish. Judges trying to uh, decipher what happened here. I love this, this first turn here, Joe. Just fully on rail. This is the second turn, excuse me. Look at the angle there. And that was that, I uh, spoke about it earlier today, just how twisted this guy gets between the hips and the top and the lower half of his body. And again, just attacking the final section. Really turbulent water underneath the board there, but no problem for John just to maintain control. Just brilliant rail work. I don't know if anybody pushes harder than John John Florence from nose to tail. That rail is engaged and he's able to switch gears with variety just according to the section. But it's never looked like he's overthinking things. He's flowing. He's just reacting to sections. You can see why he fell in love with this place many years ago. As we'll see Jack Robinson roll in deep off the bottom. Robbo drills the first section. Going straight up, vertical crushes it. A healthy two-turn combination. 
all of Margaret River getting behind Jack Robinson in a big way. Chasing down a 6-9-1 before the previous exchange. So numbers lock again. Last of John John Florence, he increased. Last score, 7.10 to go with his 8.5. And then the punt for Jack Robinson in 8.07. And now we'll wait for his last wave. <laughs> we got a heat on our hands here, mate. It's, uh, it's all starting to open up. Let's have a look at the replay here of Jack Robinson. So a nice peaky takeoff and slams that first section with the layback hammer and the second one up high into the lip. Just a really clean two-turn combination on this wave. The first turn, really high risk. The second one, really dynamic. Up as we look at the slow-mo here. Just laying right back into it. Just taking a leaf out of John John's book even. And uh, making a nice smooth transition to the second turn. Look how he cut the bottom turn short because he wanted to get right up high. Gets the tail release. And uh, wow, two-turn combination, really good stuff. I like where they've gone on the scale on this one too, Joe, with the, with the air. They left a bit of room because you've got to expect that if he does a two-big turn combination and then that air at the end, well, they're going to have to throw it a 10. But another good score just dropped here. We've got a lead change. Jack Robinson, 8.17 and the lead. This might be John's biggest test in a final here at Margaret River since he went down to DeSouza a few years back. 817 switches things. John has priority, but now needs a 7.74. And I feel like it came down to wave selection. On that last wave, he had a bit more size to work with than what John had on his previous. John obviously is freestyling, got an 8.5 on a wave that was a few feet smaller. But Robinson, rhythm with a set, two big, powerful moves for an aggressive combination and the lead change. And Jack might just roam underneath priority he's already landed one big punt he's going to go for another one on the takeoff just pops out an air reverse and he's just going to kick out there you can tell that he's connected to the energy here at finals day yeah he's feeling it isn't he and uh, showing no signs of nerves here. This is what this guy lives for. Uh, he obviously wants the event wins, but he's made it really clear. He wants to put on good performances. He wants to put on a show. He wants to be proud of, of the surfing that uh, he's, he's putting on show to the spectators and the world, everyone tuning in. And uh, he's doing just that. So, uh, well, he's staring down the barrel at a, does a double Aussie victory here. But you just know that John John Florence, given the opportunity, he is going to bounce back bigger and uh, he's going to throw everything at it. Kaipu Guerrero, the energy in this final is absolutely incredible. Yeah, the, uh, the energy I'm feeling right now, Joe, out here is a switch of energy and now it's gone to, to Jack Robinson's favor, right? And um, you're just feeling kind of the turn, you're feeling the want, not just from Jack and his performance, but from all the people out here that are just rooting for the hometown boy and you can feel it out here in the lineup. It's so cool when you hear the hometown crowd get behind any competitor. We saw that earlier this year with Baron Mamiya's win. Uh, John's gone through that in good waves and tough waves where he won at Pipe over Medina a couple years ago. And he also was heartbroken against Jeremy Flores at Pipe back in 2017 in the final. Kaipo, are you noticing any energy change from John Florence? It's sometimes pretty tough to get a read off him. Is he still really still? John Florence is a cool cat, I'm telling you right now. And that's what he does. You don't see a lot of emotion from him a lot of times when he's in pressure situations or in heavy situations. He's just sitting there. He's calm, cool, and collected, ready to strike. It's so cool, Kaipo. And I think people get confused with his calm demeanor. They think he's not competitive. He obviously wouldn't be so successful if he didn't have that fire. He just translates it in different ways. Yeah, the, the, he just, the way he is able to internalize that kind of energy, I think, is really impressive. And even when we see John in heavy waves, it's not like he's super excited. He's very calm, and I think that calmness is what makes him such a great surfer in incredible conditions. And it just translated into surfing. Good man, Kaipo, 625. Robinson leading over John John Florence. Right now, Florence is tied with two CT wins with Tommy Carroll at this amazing venue in the West. He could break that tie if he 
comes through with the victory. Another quick update on the yellow jersey. If John stays in second, yellow stays with Felipe Toledo heading into G-Land. Wow, that's an exciting prospect that uh, John might win it. Looks like he's going he's gonna to counter. Rolling in now. Florence sees a 7-7-4. A quick arc to start. Digging in hard on the top turn. You can tell he wants it. Now patience. It's starting to open up. Clear for takeoff. Florence disconnected. Misses the finish. Wow. We're starting to see a few little cracks form, Joe. We haven't seen this from John Florence this entire event. We actually haven't seen this from him in the last couple of years, the last several years at Margaret River Mainbreak. This guy is uh, he's unflappable. But uh, it just seems like with, with five minutes to go, Jack Robinson's applied a little bit pressure here, starting to push John John to a new limit. And we're starting to see uh, just a little mistake from John. He still has time. He still has time to get that 7.74, but let's just uh, see what happened here as this heat unfolded. Checking out the Harvey Norman recap of the final for the men. John John Florence going for his third title at main break at the CT level was just an all-star with his creativity and performance here at main break. 8.5 and a 7.10. And it looked like he was just running away with it. Then Jack turned on. Yeah, that first turn of John still uh, for me. One of the uh, turns of the event, but then this happened. Jack uh, Robbo just took to the air, gets the rotation, uh, bringing the progression here, and that's been the difference in this final. And then he's picked up another wave to back it up, just uh, going back to this traditional power source, just carving and arcing, just really tapping in, feeling the energy of Margaret River. And uh, here we go, live action. Rolling into this one through the white water, setting the rail, roundhouse cut back for John John Florence. Nice fade again. He's just hoping for something big to wall up for him. Goes for the throw tail reverse. He'll get that. Chasing down a 7.74. Can tell he's feeling really solid with his maneuver choice. Does he need a bigger wave to turn it on Jack Robinson? Yeah, uh, you're sort of reading my mind here, Joe. I just feel like the wave just didn't offer quite enough size and it didn't offer just that moment, that special kind of feeling you get when you watch a surfer ride a wave and you just go, yes, this is undeniable. This is the score. I just feel 7.74, seven, it just might go close, but I'm just not sure if it's there. And you think of uh, the scores that John's been dropping and what he's been doing on the waves. You can see here just a little bit sleepy, needing to, uh, to spend a bit of time to get to that moment. It was an amazing air. For, uh, for any normal human being, that one would, uh, would go in the keeper. But we've already have some big comparisons. Uh, Jack's punt, which was excellent as he's sitting out the back with the lead. Numbers locking in. Last of Florence, a 6.10, nothing changing. Just less time on the clock and the local boy with the lead and priority. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's crunch time, just under three minutes. Uh, entirely different approach to Joe. I wanted to bring this point up. I haven't seen John in the competitors area besides just picking up his jersey the entire event. He's been a phantom. He's on his own program. He hides away. He stays focused. Jack's been around it. He's been down here with coach Bat Matt Bemrose. They've been watching the conditions, tapping into the energy, feeding off the crowd. So two entirely different approaches and it's worked for John up to this point. But at the moment, Jack Robbo out in front. And it's so, so interesting to learn how Jack can turn the noise off. He can feel the energy and then he can actually fall asleep in the middle of it all on demand. He was taking a nap in the Red Bull athlete zone. Bemrose had a timer on, woke him up after about five minutes. It was a power nap and he got right back into game mode. And I feel like that's been filling his fire. He's been knowing how to take breaks through the longevity of today. Unlike, you know, John who had the walkthrough in the round of 16, Robinson had to bring it in one extra heat. That round of 16 heat was really demanding against Baron Mamiya this morning. Yeah, that was a big one. But uh, as you said, he, he's feeding off it and finding the momentum of the day. And uh, he's got to hang on here with a minute and a half to go. He's in the box seat because he does have priority. And uh, he's in an ideal position right now. 
And he's just got to play this last minute and a half. Really, really smart. We're just having a look to the horizon to see if there's any lines, a couple little lines coming through. This is exciting stuff. I remember when Jeremy Flores won in France. It was emotional. And what he said when there was a minute to go, he started breaking his mental concentration, going, is this really happening? Is that what Jack's going through right now? Yeah, absolutely. That, uh, that big win, you know, especially at home, that's going to feel good if he can get it. And it's uh, you just start counting those seconds right now. He'd been his mind going 53, 52, 51, counting it down, just hoping the ocean goes quiet here. There's a little line coming. It might get here in time. Well, for Jack, too, the dream, obviously, to win at home. But who would you want in the final? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a very satisfying feeling if you beat the undisputed best surfer at a location. And, uh, well, Jack's potentially going to do it here if he can hang on for 30 seconds. So impressive with Jack's response to John John Florence, who got going with some fire. At 8-5, John still has the single high score of the heat, but then Jack got a couple of eights to take over the momentum down to 10 seconds. Jack on the move. Waves coming through the takeoff zone. <gasps> Is this coming in time? Jack has a decision to make. Here's the countdown. And he's going to take it off him. The last wave will be ridden by Jack Robinson, and it's a victory lap. Jack Robinson wins at home and is the champ of the Margaret River Pro. What a moment for the young Australian. He's done it on home soil. He's beaten the best. He gets the win. Jack Robinson is the champion of the Margaret River Pro. And look at that scoreline. He did it in style as his competitor comes over to congratulate him. John John knows this feeling well. And what a way to take him down in an impressive finals day. Jack Robinson surfing all the way from the round of 16, got past Jordy Smith in the quarterfinals which was so impressive. Then a huge battle with Ethan Ewing, where a lot of saying, a lot of people were going with Ethan Ewing as the favorite for the rail work. That's been really reliable. Jack accomplishes the second win of his career at the championship tour level in a very short period of time. His win in Mexico was to stay on tour. Now he's officially arrived as a world title threat this year. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tracking. It's all, everything's falling into place, isn't it? The event wins are starting to come. The ratings are starting to look good. And, uh, well, just maybe we'll see Jack Robinson in the final five come September. And uh, there's the celebrations. Jack Robinson, not just close with the fans, but close with the water patrol as well, growing up here in this beautiful part of the world. On Wadandi Buja, saltwater country. Proud to be a local boy here to Margaret River. Growing up right on this special river with so many great memories. As a young grommet taking over main break in the box and now to have his name as a champion of the main event, Jack is with Kaipo. Jack, you've just taken out the Margaret River Pro. How do you feel? Thank you, thank you. I don't know, universe, everything going on. I don't know, just, just happy to get the waves and happy to have a fun final with John. Him. Um, and I was eyeing that last heat for a long time, even just the last few heats. So it was super nice. And um, yeah, I just so many hours, so much time when you win like this. Um, it's really special. We saw you manifest that in Mexico. What's it like manifesting another win here, but this time in your hometown? Man, this is it's, it's amazing because I. I've had so many rounds so close. Even last year, I was against Jeremy. We had that heat, and he got the wave in the last minute, and just so many things to come together. Um, you know, just being connected, and yeah, I'm just, I'm just so, so grateful. And thanks everybody for the support. My family, my wife Julia, um, all the people that helped me, Maddie Memrose, Leandro, Dora, the all, everyone, Rafael, not another Rafael in Hawaii. Everyone, you guys know who you are. Enjoy it. Soak it up. John John Flores is your champ. I mean, sorry, Jack Robinson. <laughs> Jack Robinson. Jack Robinson is your champ. <laughs> Jack Robinson. A quick reminder there to Kaipo that he just took down John John Flores. I got so excited.
And Jack is on top of the world, 8.17 and an 807. But how big is that? Changing the script, the theme of um, what we have been following at main break. It has been about John, and to have John in a final was extra special for Jack to get his second CT victory. Robinson is now number three in the world heading into G-Land. Yeah, it's incredible stuff. And well, we forgive you, Kaipo. He's been uh, he's been <laughs> out there for so many hours during this this entire event. But uh, uh, Jack Robinson, what what a win and uh, just an exceptional way to do it too. Just with uh, no nonsense, incredible surfing, and, and he beat the best. Such a special day for pro surfing on an incredible day at the Margaret River Pro. We have some brand new champions of this event, Jack Robinson and also Isabella Nichols. A lot to cover on the WSL Post Show, which is coming up next with Ronnie Blakey, Shannon Hughes, and Richie Lovett. We'll see you then.